Frontier have just released a raft of new details and images of the next new ship to enter Elite Dangerous. In this video we'll take you through everything we now know. The Frontier Unlocked monthly livestream just wrapped this evening and after a slew of revelations were let go I'm very pleased to be able to tell you that not only do we know what the new ship looks like but also now know what it's called, how big it is and what purpose it serves. Frontier teased the new ship to enter the game a couple of weeks back when they showed a concept rendering showing an unfamiliar ship configuration being worked on in a partially open hangar. As you can imagine at the time speculation ran rife on what this ship could possibly be and what it would be used for. The new ship which you can see on screen now is from the design houses at Zorgon Peterson and it is called the Mandalay. What's more I can tell you that it is indeed a medium class ship as many had suspected and having first this year released a combat centric vessel and then a trading and hauling ship Frontier are now introducing this brand new Explorer class vessel. The Mandalay moniker comes from a somewhat spitty breed of the Cobra Snake a fitting moniker for a Zorgon ship but FDev have also gone to lengths to not make the ship look overly aggressive. It is an explorer after all. Frontier have stated that the unusual for Elite Dangerous vertically inline engine configuration that was picked up by many observers when the first teaser was released is a direct inspiration taken from the famous British electric lightning jet from the early jet engine era of the 1960s. But interestingly the rendering of the ship that Frontier have released also links to a lightning jet fighter from a very different age. During landing the Mandalay uses variable configuration rotating engine nozzles at the rear of the ship to provide vertical columns of downward thrust to maintain lift. In essence two of the normally rearward facing engine nozzles rotate to face downward. This is an almost exact mirror of the same system used by the short takeoff vertical landing variant of the Lockheed Martin F-35 the UK variant of which is called the F-35 Lightning II. It's a very different approach for an elite ship but the differences in the ships appearance and operation don't stop there. When landed the vessel sits very high on its landing gear leaving plenty of room to move around underneath. An ideal configuration for a surface reconnaissance vehicle that should help prevent getting snagged on that one rock when trying to reboard. Rather than being the long and thin or somewhat boxier appearance that a lot of Elite Dangerous ships have traditionally sported the Mandalay sports a set of wide graceful wings. Somewhat unusually Frontier have made a point of saying that as well as handling well in space the ship will handle very nicely in an atmosphere. That's not something they've ever made a point of mentioning about on any of their ships before. I'm not for one moment suggesting that different atmospheric worlds are about to arrive in the game but the pure fact that Frontier have chosen to mention handling in an atmosphere specifically does perhaps mean that they're looking at their ships design and functionality differently than they have before. To further lean into that idea FDev have also said that the new vessel will have downward facing spot lamps to better illuminate the ground around them on darker worlds specifically to aid the explorer when landing and the landing ramp of the ship has been specifically placed in the central forward facing position so that what you see in front of you when you emerge from the ship is what was in front of you when you landed the ship. It's a small detail in the grand scheme of things but it is is a small pet peeve of mine. It's difficult to get a handle on numbers of hardpoints or indeed their placement at this early stage although these aren't so important for an explorer class ship we think we can see at least two on the top and Frontier haven't given any more specific details at the time of recording or indeed on the internals that we can expect to ship with Zorgon Peterson's latest creation. What they have said is that as with all Frontiers new generation of ships so far this year the Mandalay is specifically tuned to handle Super Cruise overcharge and FDev are saying it will be better in this particular regard than the Python Mark II or the Type 8. 
and really importantly for explorers they are saying that in the hyperspace jump range department it will give the now venerable anaconda a run for its money. Frontier had said that this years new ships would be variants of existing ships. The design lineage is very apparent in the Python Mark II but it's only really in the Type 8 cockpit that the variant idea shows its DNA. The rest of the ship is very very different from anything we've seen in the game before. The same can be said again for the Mandalay Explorer. Zorgon Petersons reuse of their existing tech is only really apparent in the cockpit which has come direct from the Mamba. If the cockpit from the Mamba follows all the way through then that would also make the Mandalay a two seater ship at the very least. A lot of explorers favour use of a ship launched fighter to help facilitate rapid reconnaissance of a planetary surface but until FDEV confirm either way we'll have to see if the Mandalay is SLF capable or not. The rearward facing surfaces of the wings have a very distinct aerolon feel to them the same as a traditional aircraft and even appear to be hinged so it's possible that these may move during atmospheric manoeuvres at the very least. Those wings do appear to give the ship a very wide aspect indeed for a medium pad and we couldn't see on the renders we were supplied with an obvious place that the wings would hinge to move out of the way like some conventional carrier based aircraft. Also the images FDEV have provided don't show or indeed hint at folded wings. The accompanying description document however that we got from Frontier does mention quote we also looked at aviation design again which you'll notice in things like the panel design and how the wings split up into pieces as well as some inspiration from NASA." End quote. The nearest comparison medium ship is, for obvious reasons, the Mamba and when you overlay the two ships and resize using the cockpit canopy to judge scale it does appear that the Mandalay is too wide for a medium pad. We have, obviously, had to assume that the cockpit isn't being rescaled for the Mandalay and is exactly the same size but until we can confirm either way it makes for a compelling comparison at least. Frontier have said that the ship is arriving with PowerPlay 2.0 in October. The eagle eyed amongst you will note that PowerPlay was originally scheduled for a September release but having checked with Frontier I can confirm that a slight delay has indeed been introduced into the PowerPlay release schedule to make sure that the feature is absolutely ready to ship to the player base. The rest of the ships design featuring graceful gull like wings, deep verticality to the hull and that innovative lift system are unlike anything else we've ever encountered in Elite Dangerous. When I saw the Python Mark II at the start of the year I was happy we were getting something new. Like many commanders I was blown away by the industrial design aesthetics of the Type 8. The Mandalay however has lifted Frontier's new era of second generation ships into a whole new arena and I cannot wait to get my hands on one. What a time to be an elite dangerous player, what a time to be a commander. What features would you like to see in Zorgon Peterson's new explorer? Do you think the Mandalay's wings will need to fold up and will you be picking one up when the ship enters early access? Let us know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video be sure to like and subscribe so that YouTube shows you all our content and if you'd like to support our work here at the Burr Pit you can also join us on Patreon. Links to that and everything we've talked about in this video you'll find linked below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.